Hello, I thought I'd just walk you through an example homework problem. So this is 11.3. They give us an equation for the position and then they want to know position velocity and acceleration when time is one second. Let's just start with part A here. First thing you're going to do, clear out your variables. And now we're going to just type in the equation they give us at, for our position as a function of time. How I'm typing it in here, this is how you define a function in Mathematica, not too bad, just use some square brackets, colon equals sign, capital S for sign, and just notice how all the brackets here for all the little functions are square. So there's our position, and this is all you have to do to take the derivative. So velocity is dx dt, acceleration is dv dt, and so see here, it's just done all of the calculus for us. There's our velocity, that's the first derivative, and there's our acceleration, that's the second derivative. Isn't that nice? It does everything for us. Now what we want to do is figure out what these functions are when we plug in a value of 1 for our time. So I'm going to just go ahead and pull up that function in again, and instead of typing in t, I'm going to type in 1. So x of 1, that's going to give us our position when t equals 1 and velocity and acceleration. So here's those equations, and you'll notice instead of t's in the equations, we now have numbers in the equations. A semicolon, that um, suppresses output. So now what it's showing here is x of 1. So again, it's just plugging in a number for everywhere it sees a time here. So there's our acceleration on there. And now to turn it into a number, slash slash n turns it into a number, and this is going to evaluate all those functions for us when time equals 1. And we can come down here and check our answer. So at time equals 1 seconds, this is where our position is, that's where our velocity is, that's where our acceleration is and it checks out. We got the right answer. Now I like to not just get a numerical answer. I like to also plot out the functions. You really don't get a full picture of what's going on in the system until after you plot it out. So here I'm using Mathematica's graphing and you just say plot. I don't have to type the equations in or anything. I've already defined my function. I give it a range, so I'm going to go from time equals 0 to 2 seconds, because we're interested in 1 seconds. And the legends, that's just going to label our line, so you can see here what our function is doing. That top blue line, that's the position. The orange line, that's what our velocity is doing as a function of time. And then the green line, that's our acceleration. So you can see how each of those quantities is changing with time. Time is on the x-axis here. And then right at one second, you can look at the values that are going on at one second. So now let's go ahead and look at part B, the maximum velocity and maximum acceleration. I'm just going to get rid of everything but our original function. And let's have a look at this graph again. This time, let's plot it maybe to five seconds again get a better idea for what's going on here. So what we're looking at is a combination of sines and cosines. So this function is just going to keep going and going. There's quite a lot of maxes happening and mins happening. We're going to be looking for the amplitudes of these functions. So let's just take a closer look at this graph here. And let's just think about first where the maximum velocity happens. So look down here at the graph. Which one is our velocity? That's the orange one here. And the maximum, so we're just looking at the tops of those waves and what time do those reach their maximum. And there's something interesting here. If you look how velocity correlates with acceleration, you can see that the max velocities happen where the accelerations are zero. And think about physically why that would be. So it's not speeding up, it's not slowing down, it's not accelerating. That's where the max velocity happens. Okay, so let's just play around with a FET simulation here. This is Colorado University puts these out for free. If you just Google PHET, you can find them. Now, think about what's going on here. 
at the top. Gravity is pulling down. The spring is pushing down. Acceleration is negative. This is that negative force pushing down on it, and the velocity stops at the top. So velocity is zero, where acceleration is maxed out. And look at the slopes. The slope on the position curve is zero. The slope on the velocity curve is that negative acceleration. And what's happening in the center? This is the equilibrium position. The spring is pulling up at the same amount that gravity is pulling down. The forces are zero. They cancel each other out. Acceleration is zero. Velocity is a max. Again, look at those slopes. The slope on the position curve is a max. Velocity is a max. The slope on the velocity curve is a zero. Acceleration is zero. Okay, let's look at the last position all the way stretched down to the bottom. The spring is pulling up. Acceleration is up. Acceleration is positive. The position is at a minimum. Again, that slope comes to a zero. The velocity comes to zero. Velocity is a slope of the position curve. Acceleration is a slope of the velocity curve. Well, we still need to find the actual numbers on this thing, so let's go ahead and solve for what time our acceleration is equal to zero. And if we can figure that time out, we can plug it into our velocity. Now, this happens over and over and over again. That's why we're getting an equation here instead of just a number. And all of those c's, we can plug in c equals 1, c equals 2, c equals 3, and we'll get all of those little max point. I'm just going to set my time equal to, I'm going to let my constant equal 1 and just grab that first little wave. And then after we have the time that our acceleration is 0, this is the time that we're going to want to plug into our velocity equation. So I'm just going to grab our function, we've already defined what our function is, so we can say what is our velocity at this time. And sure enough, there's our 36.1 millimeters per second. So that is the maximum velocity. Pause the video, study these graphs. What are we after next? The maximum acceleration. We can grab it on the bottom or the top of that wave. So let's come on back here and max acceleration happens when the velocity is zero. So let's find out that time where our velocity is zero. Turn that into a number. Again, this is an equation because this happens over and over and over again. So we're just going to grab the first wave and plug this time in. So here's the time where velocity is zero and this is also the time where we're going to have a maximum acceleration. So let's plug this time into our acceleration. See what's going on there? We get negative 72.11. And we can come down here and check our answer for this thing. Let's see. So yep, 72.1. And look at this graph just one more time. We're looking for a maximum of the acceleration. That's this green curve here. And the green curve hits a max where the orange velocity curve is zero. And our velocity is zero up at the top where it's compressed that spring to the top. Well, that just about wraps up that problem. That problem actually had quite a lot to it. Nothing is constant. You have position constantly changing, acceleration constantly changing, velocity constantly changing. If you can get this problem, you'll be able to do just about any of them because this is as bad as it gets. We'll see you later.